In the science fiction film Inception, the protagonist Dominic Cobb attempts to implant an idea into his target Maurice Fisher's subconscious mind. That implanted idea was designed to eventually lead Fisher to break up his father's empire, which he had inherited. That someone could do such a thing in real life seems far-fetched until we stumble upon the theory of reflexive control, a well-developed military information warfare theory. Reflexive control attempts to interfere with the target's decision-making process through specially crafted information, which will make the target voluntarily make a decision that is in the best interest of the initiator, even though it is detrimental to the target's own interests. To understand reflexive control, we need not turn to science fiction, but can instead focus on an ancient Panch Tantra tale, the Brahman, the Goat and the Three Crooks. The story unfolds thus. There was a Brahman who desired to offer a goat to the gods for a ritual sacrifice. He went to a devotee and requested him to donate a goat. The devotee readily agreed and gave the Brahman one of his best goats. Pleased, the Brahman put the goat on his shoulder and walked back to his village, where he planned to conduct the ritual sacrifice. When he was on his way, three crooks were watching him and said to themselves, We are all hungry and starving and the Brahman is alone. Maybe we should just rob him. But if he identifies us and then complains to the headman, we will be in trouble. So we should somehow trick him to give us the goat on his own. Thus, they came up with a plan. All of them took a shortcut, ran ahead of the Brahman and placed themselves in the path that target was walking on. The first crook walked past his target and said, Oh Brahman, why are you carrying a dog on your shoulder? On hearing this, the Brahman got angry and said, What are you talking about? Can't you see that I am carrying a sacrificial goat? Go away, you blind fool. The first crook then apologized and said to the Brahman, Please don't get angry with me. Maybe my eyes are deceiving me. But it is a dog that I see. You can go ahead and I will not trouble you anymore. As the Brahman walked further, he met the second crook, who said, Oh Brahman, why are you carrying a dead calf on your shoulder? This made the Brahman even angrier and he shouted, Are you really blind? Can't you see this is a goat? The second crook also apologized and said, Sorry, but my eyes are probably fooling me. But it is a dead calf I see. You can go ahead, I won't speak of this again. After some time, the third crook met the Brahman and said, Oh Brahman, why are you carrying a donkey on your shoulder? This is highly improper. Don't do this, people may laugh at you. Now the Brahman was perplexed. He wondered, How is it that three people can see a different animal, but I can see only a goat? Maybe it is not a goat after all. Maybe it is a shape sifting goblin that will eat me at the right time. This made the Brahman very afraid. He threw the goat down on the street, thanked the crooks for showing him the true form of the goblin and then ran away. The crooks were happy that they were able to trick the Brahman to give them his goat without having to resort to violence. They caught the goat, took him home, killed and ate it to satiate their hunger. Let us examine the story at a deeper level from the point of view of the crooks to understand how they had succeeded. Their goal was twofold, avoid violence as it would attract more trouble and to persuade their target to give up the goat voluntarily and even thank them. To achieve this, they had to understand their target's biases and beliefs at a subconscious level. Put differently, they had to understand the target better than the target himself. They had to then think about the information that must be presented to the target keeping the target's biases and beliefs in consideration, which would bring about the desired result. They would also need to somehow make the target believe that the information presented to him was not a lie and was credible. So what are the biases and beliefs of the Brahman in this tale, as seen from the point of view of the crooks? Number one, he is fearful of gods and demons and in general of heaven and hell. Number two, he is obsessed with the idea of purity and does not like to touch dead things. Number three, he has clear ideas on which animals are better and which are inferior. Number four, he thinks too highly of himself, of his own knowledge and has never questioned his own beliefs. Number five, finally, while he is proud of his knowledge, he has never understood knowledge deeply and has not understood how knowledge itself is made. He is not a philosopher. Such analysis is called understanding the filter in reflexive control terminology. The crooks in this tale have fully examined and understood the Brahman, even better than the Brahman himself. All that is required is to prepare an information packet, which is custom-crafted information that the target will process and react to, 
so that the desired effect is achieved. The first crook delivered a message that played on the impurity bias by calling the goat a dog. The message triggered an I know it all response from the Brahman, who disregarded the crook's opinion and continued on his path. The second crook then delivered a message that triggered another, stronger, impurity bias by calling the goat a dead calf. This also activated the I know it all response. The third crook then delivered the message that played on the Brahman's feeling of superiority. By telling him that it was improper and that people would make fun of him for carrying a donkey, the crook forced the Brahman to think about what all the three crooks had said to him individually. Since the Brahman believed in gods and demons, his subconscious mind led him to that category of explanation for this phenomenon of different people seeing different animals on his shoulder. Fear then overrode the Brahman's pride in his own knowledge and led him to accept the crook's information sequence. He finally threw the goat down from his shoulder and walked away, even thanking the crooks for their help. Viewed from the perspective of reflexive control, it is clear who is the more knowledgeable and who is ignorant in the story. Yet, the story is not written in this manner in the Panchatantra. The ancient story is in fact written from the point of view of the Brahman, presenting the three men as crooks, thus getting the story's moral wrong. The only moral that is drawn from the story is that untruths spoken repeatedly appear to be the truth. It fails to delve into why the Brahman fell for the crook's message, even though he has been the more learned of them. This tale makes it clear that neither the writer nor the story's subsequent tellers understood the weakness of the Brahman and the mastery of the crooks that allowed their methods to work so successfully. They failed to acknowledge the character traits of the Brahman, which included ignorance, arrogance, and a lack of self-awareness that were instrumental in shaping his response to the information sent to him by the crooks. Retellings of the story also failed to acknowledge the mastery of the crooks, who were self-aware, had the capability to understand the Brahman's worldview and biases, and could also craft messages that led to the exact outcome that they wanted without their objective or even involvement being revealed. The story demonstrates just how hard it is for targets of reflexive control techniques to even understand how they were manipulated because it plays on the target's inherent character flaws. To dive deeper into how reflexive control works in the real world, read The Art of Conjuring Alternate Realities, How Information Warfare Shapes Your World, HarperCollins 2021. For more on geopolitics, information warfare and forces shaping our world, subscribe to the memory.